pick those up. Want to give you guys one last look at the TDI before we bring it inside, slam it on these BC Extreme Lows. It is not tucking in the back, it is not tucking in the front, it is on coilovers. I don't know what their adjustability is, but with the car, wanting to go with all this camber, I decided to go with the BC Extreme Lows. So let's bring the Mark V inside, let's put on these Extreme Lows, and let's get rid of any of this gap we got going on, and let's tuck some rim. Are you kidding me right now? You name a better scenario, Alex Wittick with a fresh Mark V TDI platform, static BC coilovers. We got new garage doors this year, a new platform, and new coilovers. So today, we're gonna be installing these. I'm so excited for it, you guys don't even know. Let's take a breath, let's jack this thing up, and let's get to it. Oh boy, first sight, snapped wires, second sight. What are these, Solo Works coilovers? Anyone want Solo Works coilovers, you let me know, they're for sale. If you own a European vehicle, get this. I think it's like 15 bucks on Amazon, it's linked below. But you have an assortment of triple squares. Right here I have a 14, I need this for the back end of this. So yeah, they're like 15 bucks, they're linked below on my Amazon affiliate link down in the description and AutoZone's gonna get you for like $25 for a pack of four. This is like 15 for 10, so it's obviously a no-brainer. So one thing that Volkswagen Audi people do that kind of scares me is they don't even use strut threaders. They kind of just get in there with a pick. I don't understand that method, but you literally just put this in there and turn it. It's as simple as that. Look at that. Look at that. It's actually not recommended that you put anti-seize on the bottom of your suspension, but there is this little hook back here, which gets stopped by the bolt. So it's kind of safe, but if you're seeing this, you see the anti-seize, you're like, oh, it looks much easier. I wouldn't recommend putting it on there, but that's how somebody else did it. Now that the bottom's out, now you attack the top tray. You never attack the top tray and then the bottom tray because you can't get that force down. People put anti-seize on there, make it so much easier for you to drop it, but if it didn't have anti-seize, you would never be able to separate these two if you had done the top first because you gotta like be able to jump on this and get the force to go down. Everyone does coilover install videos, which that's not what this is. I'm kind of just documenting me doing it. Always oh, says to take the rain cowl out. I mean, you could literally just lift this up and get to all three of those bolts without an issue. So I would just recommend just getting this weather strip off and then just peeling this up a little bit. And just like that. Oh, yeah. The suspension's out, and it's for sale. All right, so now that my suspension's out, free and clear, it's time to install some BC coilovers. All right, so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the coilover completely to maxed out low, and then in the future video, we'll install these, angle the sleeves for insane camber, and machine the top hat. That's as low as you're gonna go. Max out the top hat for the camber, because you already know we're tilty boys, and then we're gonna throw it in. Now, the reason I took the bolts out is because when you max out the camber, you only have one hole there. So what you want to do is spin this around, spin it all the way like this, and now you got two bolt holes, and you'll be safe again. I've seen one too many kids flexing their camber on the gram with only one of these bolts in the top on each side. It's quite cringe. A little insider secret about reinstalling these coilovers. There's a little pin in the back there. It's going to guide that all the way down. The strut spreader here always gets in the way when you put it in the back here. So make sure you have it facing down right here in the top, and you'll have no issues. So let's close this gap real quick. If I was going for performance, this definitely wouldn't be it because I'd be unsetting the preload, but 
I just want to slam this thing, so. And at least here still, after I drop that spring all the way down, there's no spring flop. So at least when it's on full sag, the spring won't be jumping around. Just for reference, before we put this wheel back on and see how low this car is, there's the BC Extreme Low, and there's a solo work coilover. No, I, I guess. But soon, baby, soon. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh, that's more like it. She. Oh. Yeah, um. But y'all get the idea, right? Look how hard that, oh. Can you see the smile on my face? Can you already see the ideas brewing? You see that, right? You see that. <laughs>did it we got the mark 5 on bc coilovers we got a max out to the low we got swift springs on the back with the fronts we're still running the ak spring and then coming over here to the rear we're running the 28k swift spring stop me from going lower in the rear actually is the fender liners are holding the body of the car up this should probably be sagged down to here but uh they're quite literally holding the car up now something that was really hard for me to fight back and not do was add crazy camber to the front and crazy camber to the rear 
but that's gonna take a lot of modifications. So I didn't modify the rear camper arms and all I did was adjusted the top hat on this setup. For the level I'm trying to build this car to, we're gonna need extremely stiff springs. So I'm talking 50K. I want really crazy static fitment and that's easy to achieve when you're talking to me. What's cool was for the front, since I was able to max out the top hats, I got negative three degrees of camber, which is pretty fun, especially if it was a daily. And now in the rear, they're running so flush. I would say this is running maybe about one to two degrees of camber, nothing crazy. But when I go to add crazy camber to this car, we're gonna be extending the lower control arms. We're gonna be extending the top control arm. I plan to have this car sitting at negative 20s in the rear for camber, tuck and lip, absolute insane fitment. And then same here in the front. We're gonna be relocating the shock mounting location. Like there is so much work that goes into cambering these vehicles. You have to do it yourself or you have to go to somebody that's kind of gonna do some hackery and I don't do hackery. I do my own TIG welding. I fab my own parts and I want this thing to drive safely even though we're not leaving the driveway. My plans with this car, as you guys know, not to make it road legal make it completely just off-road use only race car. If you're interested in purchasing those solar coilovers, leave your Instagram handle down below. I'm located in Northern New Jersey and the price for those coilovers, I'm gonna be setting it at $250. Overall, the stoke on this build is absolutely through the roof. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash the subscribe button, put on a post notification bell. And uh, remember, your vehicle is unique to you. Don't even put you down and always have a smile, always have fun. These cars are our lives and uh, they can bring us out of dark places. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Race car seats in the Mark V? Let me know. Ooh, a Mark V VRM tickles my toes.